1836, these rolling hills and fertile valleys became part of a new kind of British colony. The white settlements in New South Wales and Tasmania had been established as penal colonies, but South Australia, by sharp contrast, was created by voluntary emigrants who were free men. Adventurous and entrepreneurial, some of them saw wine as a good business. And the guidebook tells me that claret and burgundy types are now produced. Total yield in 1911 was nearly 6 million gallons, of which over half came from South Australia. Hugh Hamilton Wines is Australia's oldest surviving family wine business. Its boss, Mary Hamilton, can trace the company's roots back six generations to one of those first settlers. Mary, hello. Hello, Michael. What a glorious location for the vineyard. It's beautiful, isn't it? Your business was begun, I think, by your great, great, great grandfather. That's right. Uh, tell me about him. Richard Hamilton was a tailor on the high street of Dover in Kent. And at the age of about 47, which in equivalent terms would have made him a very old man, he packed up his whole life, went and put down 80 pounds, which would have been his life savings, on 80 acres in a colony that was not yet formed called South Australia. Absolutely amazing. And he had a family, presumably? Yes, he had nine children. And so I guess he rolled the dice on their future as well, packed them all up, and they hopped on this ship called the Catherine Stewart Forbes, 16 weeks at sea, and then they docked here at Glenelg in Adelaide, and uh, that's where their new life began. What an extraordinary thing to do. Have you speculated on why he wanted to make a new life? He had two lives, it turns out. He was a tailor by day, but by the light of the moon, he was a smuggler. <laughs> he was very conveniently located in Dover to be able to um, hop down to the beach and receive some contraband Bordeaux from France on a regular basis. Oh, so he was in wine, in a way. He was. It must have been a real shock to arrive here and find that there wasn't a drop to be found. So he penned a letter possibly in desperation, an SOS saying, for the health of the family, this was to some friends in South Africa, please send me out some grapevine cuttings. He planted probably the first grapevines in South Australia. He would have been producing more from what we can see than he could have personally consumed, so he probably starts selling it to the neighbours. A fabulous Australian, South Australian story. And what do you make of this character, your great, great, great grandfather? What does he mean to you? In, in awe of, of what he did, but the pioneers generally, I think it shows incredible tenacity. Just to even take on the whole challenge late in life of moving as far away as you could possibly go on the promise that life would be better here. And then arrives and finds that his passion for wine is not accommodated, so he does something about it. Today, Australian wine is an industry of more than 40 billion Australian dollars and this state produces more than half of it. Here they grow eight different varieties on 80 acres. Well, Mary, you certainly chose the right spot for your tasting room, didn't you? It looks different every day, which makes life interesting. Ah, now, tell me about this fellow here. So this is our 1837 bloodline Shiraz, 1837 being the year that my great-great-great-grandfather Richard arrived in South Australia. It's what he planted first. What is this wrapped around it? This is Richard Hamilton's story. That goes on every bottle? This goes on each bottle. July 28, 1837, the Kent and Surrey News and Advertiser. Dover Taylor leaves for the new colony of South Australia under a veil of mystery. Mr Hamilton, Esquire of Dover, a tailor and landowner of some repute with a shop on Snargate Street, is believed to have left with his family. Some intrigue surrounds Mr Hamilton, who's rumoured to have been dealing in contraband Bordeaux from across the English Channel. A black sheep, indeed. Mmm. It's a lovely, rich, generous wine, isn't it? Tell me about South Australians. Uh, are they different from other Australians? 
I think other Australians think we're different. We often get ribbed a little bit for our Adelaide accent. You're thought to be a bit posh? A little bit English, yeah. <laughs> I suppose maybe South Australians are quite proud that um, they arrived in a free settled state as opposed to arriving in chains. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely put. Cheers. To the free state. <laughs>